People always ask me, how have you done this for so long? And I, my answer is always vitamin C and a little hostility. Because I still have a passion for what I'm doing and what I'd like to see get done. Loretta got a bill passed in New Jersey. She literally hand delivered the bill to my husband. And then I went to bat for it. We all went to bat for it and we got it passed uh, in the Congress. Senator Weinberg, why do you rise? New Jersey women make 79 cents for every dollar made by men. African American women make just 58 cents for every dollar made by their white male counterparts. Just because I'm a member of a certain group doesn't mean that I can be denigrated over and over again. It's got to stop at some point. Now, I'm sorry if you find this uncomfortable, but I'm not certainly not singling you out as a person or as a human being. I have no intention of denigrating white men. I was actually married to a white man, and I have a grandson who's a white man, and hopefully that grandson will grow up in a society that will recognize when other people are treated unequally. Joining us now is New Jersey Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg. She represents a district that includes Fort Lee, New Jersey, is a focus on the traffic study as essentially the cover-up. It was a cover-up. The lane closures were done improperly. They didn't follow any of our policies and procedures. We haven't found any reason to have them done. Eventually, hopefully sooner rather than later, we will hear the whole story of who knew what when. Shortly after it was introduced, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie vetoed Senator Weinberg's new smart gun bill. They seem to oppose almost everything. Anytime we suggest anything, after the New Jersey legislature just voted to legalize gay marriage, Governor Chris Christie has single-handedly blocked it. People should be judged by the love in their heart and not the gender of their love. I might be 76, and yes, I'm a grandmother, but I have enough energy and enough spirit to tell Chris Christie he's not going to bully me and he's not going to bully the people that I represent in the New Jersey State Legislature. I keep on coming back to the confidence and the passion to do what I do. If I didn't have that, the game wouldn't be worth it. And it's not something that you can learn in school. It takes experience, and experiences add up to what some people call courage. To me, it's just who I am. What I bring to my legislative career, I think, is my own personal experiences. It isn't necessarily the education I've received. It isn't that somebody taught this to me. It is how I learned it, sometimes not so happily. I lost my husband to cancer some 17 years ago, and that's where I learned how important healthcare is in our country and in our state, and how important good healthcare insurance is. And it's where I learned a little bit about marriage equality. We were married for 38 years. We have two children, I have two grandchildren. Nobody questioned my right to walk into his hospital room. Nobody questioned my right to make medical decisions on his behalf. And that stuck with me when I heard from gay couples that their loved one was in the hospital and they could not gain entrance to a hospital room or make a decision. And I'll go into the history a little bit of the marriage equality issue because it started out as a domestic partnership bill. And uh, my granddaughter, who is almost 14 years old, at the moment of her birth, I was in New Jersey, in my office, with the entire lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and I called, and whatever coalition. 
working on domestic partnership, the first very, very small step forward for uh, marriage equality. It was the beginning. But Shane is almost 14 years old, so that's how I can date it. And we got the call from the delivery room that the baby had been born. We put her, put the call on uh, speakerphone, and I did what any self-respecting grandmother would do, burst into tears. And the entire coalition was cheering in the background. And there was a woman in the group who's transgender. I knew she was transgendered, but I only knew her as a woman. And she came up and she put her arm around me and she said, I'm a grandfather, you know. Well, that's where I learned to say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew Babs as a woman, but actually in her prior life, she'd had grandchildren who knew her as a grandfather. And that moment stays in my mind, and of course it was intertwined with one of the happiest moments in my life, the birth of my first grandchild, and then the beginning of the domestic partnership bill. It took close to 10 years to evolve into marriage equality. We went from domestic partnership to civil unions because there was this Somehow there was a um, reluctance, mostly on the part of the men in the legislature more than anybody else, to call it marriage. So they made themselves comfortable with the term civil union. That went to the Supreme Court of New Jersey, and the first female Supreme Court justice, chief justice in New Jersey, was a woman by the name of Deborah Poritz. She was a former English teacher. And so she said, when the issue of changing the words or using marriage equality versus civil unions, she said, words do count. And by the way, she didn't win that one. The Supreme Court, kept, the Supreme Court of New Jersey kept it as civil unions, and then a couple of years later, we actually passed marriage equality. It was a long road, and it also taught me that discipline and focus, sometimes patience and sometimes impatience, are the ingredients to get a bill passed into law. How much more privilege can you get than to be a participant in endeavors like that, that you know have life-altering results for the people around you. So if for those of you who are planning to go into elected office, I hope you're going to remember to always make friends and reach out on a bipartisan level. I've worked very, very hard with somebody across the aisle, Senator Diane Allen, who is um, across the aisle, again, uh, from the other party, but a terrific legislator. She is retiring this year, and I am going to miss her as a friend, and I'm going to miss her as a sister legislator. And it is so important to have that kind of bipartisanship because not only passing bills together, but it's ha having voices in each of our caucuses. So when we caucus as the Democratic majority and the Republican minority or vice versa, to have a voice that I know that Diane will carry forward in her caucus and that I can carry forward in my caucus, that is another reason why the bipartisanship is so important. And it, it kind of goes under the radar screen. I don't think people realize it enough that that's really important. And then when we're trying to count votes for something, I can get the real story from her, and she can get the real story from me, and nobody can pull the wool over our collective eyes. So lastly, there's one more bill I'm going to talk about a little bit, and that's the 48 hours for new moms and their babies. That was done, again, with somebody from the other side of the aisle. It was in the assembly, Assemblywoman Rose Heck, and uh, it was the time of the drive-through deliveries, 
when women were ushered in, given maybe eight or 10 hours in the hospital to give birth and sent home. So we had to get into a big fight with getting the insurance companies to pay for at least 48 hours of aftercare for new moms and their babies. And Rose Heck and I went around to uh, all the committees that we had to testify before. And we had a little, uh, a little routine that we did. And we would say things like breastfeeding <laughs> or bleeding. <laughs> and the men on the committee, and they were mostly men, were like, I don't care, wait, whatever you want, just get out of here and stop talking to us. <laughs> that is the truth. And that's what I mean about taking some of your real life experiences, understanding what it is you want to do, and having a little sense of humor about yourselves. But we actually did that. We used to laugh afterwards, but it was a um, uh, it was a great endeavor. The bill was signed by Governor Christie Todd Whitman um, at Holy Name Hospital, and right up till the last minute, right on the floor of the legislature, they tried to get an amendment through 48 hours, comma, if medically necessary. <laughs> Well, you can all tell what that would do to a 48-hour bill. Uh, but it also taught me how we had to watch every single thing that was going on in front of us. So the 48-hour bill was great for New Jersey, but we could not regulate large insurance plans. We needed a federal law for that. So I was invited to the White House along with lots of other people. Bill Clinton was the president, and I brought this along with me, and we got our two minutes in the room with the president, and I had the folder with me, and I said, listen, we passed a bill in New Jersey. We need a federal law to really back it up. It's good politics and good law. And said, well, tell my assistant, and I gave the folder to whoever was standing next to him. And a few months later, we were driving in the car, and the president was giving a Mother's Day speech on the radio. And he talked about this. He said, we're going to undertake this issue in the federal government. And I kind of punched my husband in the arm and said, I did that. <laughs> I, I mean, and I know we laugh and smile, but you know, there's a, a, a phrase actually in Yiddish that uh, says kakalefer. It means mixing spoon. So that's what I would like to impart, that we want leaders coming behind us who, in whatever endeavor they're in, that they're the mixing spoons of those endeavors, mixing up the waters or the soup or the champagne punch, whatever it might be uh, that, you're doing, that you're undertaking. So remember that. And then I'm obviously at the tail end of my career, not at the beginning that all of you are. Uh, and I'm not finished yet, so don't, you know. <laughs> I, have, I have to finish up pay equity, earn sick leave. There are a few things still out there undone that we are going to get done. But I honestly believe if there aren't places like the Center for American Women in Politics, and the women sitting in this room, if you aren't willing to put your toe in the water and to become that mixing spoon and to be a little bit of a troublemaker, go against the grain a little bit, but most important, to find the passion that, make, that makes you feel that you know what you want to do then you know what, then everything I've done is for naught. So though we say this kind of tongue in cheek about leaving a generation of troublemakers behind me, I'm quite serious about it. So I, it all comes back to courage. The courage to find what it is that each of you truly believe in. What is your passion going to be? What is it you want to do as a leader in 
whatever endeavor you choose. Because if you truly believe in what it is you want to do, what is the goal here? Why am I doing this? Then you're going to find the courage to do it. Now it's your turn. Thank you.